Uh, right, let's get to Manchester United. Uh, it could be a busy week for them as well. A number of European clubs are exploring a potential deal for forward Jadon Sancho. As it stands, he will stay at United, but this new interest makes Sancho definitely one to watch in the final 10 days of the window. Um, Dan, given the history with Eric Ten Hag, with the club, do you, do you think a move, if one comes up, a move to a big European club would, would make the most sense for him? I think regardless, once the window closes, I think that can be really the next chapter for Jadon Sancho, whether that's at Manchester United or another club. Because while the window's open, it is quite easy to have this narrative around what happened with Ten Hag last season. And of course, he was so good at Borussia Dortmund in spells last season as well. Whereas when the window closes, at least he can finally move on. Whether that's at United with the four other wingers who were there, the likes of Marcus Rashford, Alejandro Garnacho, Anthony Ahmad as well. But he can also play in the false nine position. So there definitely is space for him at United. I think the question is, who is out there in Europe who really needs that winger? You know, you look at PSG, they've they signed someone in this week, so they've potentially called their interest in Sancho. You look who else is out there in Europe. There doesn't seem a natural fit at the moment. So I think he's best off trying to get his way back into that United side. And I think there'd be nothing more than the fans at Old Trafford wanting to see Sancho succeed. It's just whether he's given the opportunity and whether he can really work his way into the system, I think. I just can't see where he fits at the moment. It's, it's good that they've buried the hatchet and that he's not training with the kids and not allowed into the complex, things like that. Nobody wants to see stuff like that happening. But there's a lot of barriers to him getting into that Manchester United team. We saw he wasn't in the squad on, on Friday. Obviously, that was a little bit to do, to do with illness. But now he's kind of, he's out that squad. So for him to get back in, someone's got to come out and I don't see who that is. And people are talking about like the false nine position as a, as a fail safe. Manchester United have got two recognised centre forwards now that will want game time. I don't really see that as a viable option. The right hand side looks like Ahmed's really made a play for that position to make that his own. They've got Anthony, who cost a lot of money there as well. On the other side, you've got Rashford and Garnacho, both their best football. Side, so I think that probably rules that position out. Number 10, Fernandez and Mount. So I, I don't, although we're saying Sancho can play in all these positions, I don't see at Manchester United where, when he's going to play in those positions with, with, with all those options. Why do you think there's been no Premier League clubs associated with him in the last few days? We're just hearing that there might be some interest from European clubs. Yeah, I mean, I think this is the interesting thing is, it's what does Jadon Sancho want? You know, does he want to be playing football, which you would imagine wants to play every week. But then you look at the other clubs in the Premier League, you know, unless you looked at Arsenal, for example, you know, they're, they're very settled with the likes of Trossard, Saka, Martinelli. Tottenham have a wealth of wingers as well, likewise in Manchester City. So it doesn't seem that, you know, Jadon Sancho will want to be playing, you know, the highest level possible yeah. European football. And I think when you look in the Premier League, there's maybe, I mean, you might say Aston Villa, but maybe there's not perhaps a, a natural fit. And maybe no. he's best off just working his way into that United side. Strength and depth. These teams are now playing over 60 games a season. You know, I, I think we need to get away from, you know, our two, three players enough. These teams need mm. strength and depth. And he'll get opportunities this season, I think. I guess wage and, and transfer fee would be the barriers for, for Premier League clubs. But then we know that the Premier League's the league that carries the, the most amount of money. So if it's a barrier for Premier League clubs probably going to be a barrier for clubs outside of the, of the Premier League as well. I think in an ideal world, he probably would have moved to Dortmund. But Dortmund, although they facilitated the loan deal in the second half of last season, the way they operate as a club fundamentally, they're not going to pay the kind of transfer fee that Sancho is going to command and they're not going to be able to afford the wages. So again, it kind of leaves a player stuck because I think the, the ideal place for him to play his football now mm. would be Dortmund because we saw what he did in the Champions League last season. Uh, OK, in terms of midfield, uh, Man United have been looking for a midfielder for much of this window and Manuel Oate remains a live option. Talks continue with Paris Saint-Germain over his signing. As it stands, Scott McTominay will remain at Old Trafford and as a result, Manchester United may have to be creative when it comes to potential incomings. Uh, I mean, we've spoken about midfielders, central midfielders in Man United for the last couple of weeks and... The fact that we've come up with so many different names, I mean, now it seems like Uwate is, is in pole position, he's the one they've zeroed in on. But the fact that we've mentioned so many names, does that suggest that there isn't an obvious option to improve the midfield? Yeah, I think it depends what angle you look at this, because actually you could look at maybe half cup full in terms of actually Manchester United under Ineos. I think when you've looked at who they've signed this year, they, 
they really have had alternative options for each signing they've made, which actually, perhaps compared to previous windows, they've had one target and pursued that one target all window. So I think actually having different options for midfield could be positive. I think Awate would make a lot of sense. He's a bit younger. They need a number six, I think, to really give Mainu a bit of a break, but also rotate in and out with Casemiro as well. So I think he would be a natural fit. He's tenacious. He can play with the ball and he's happy to put a tackle in as well. So perhaps it just alleviates the pressure off Casemiro a little bit and also doesn't put as much pressure on Mainu as well at just 19 years old. Mm.